Nord Stream 2. Remember when that pipeline went kablammo and the media and the Biden administration really wanted us to think it was Russia? Funny how so-called conspiracy theorists are usually just the ones who figure things out before everyone else. Reported today that Biden knew three months ahead of time that Ukraine was actually planning its demolition all along. Yes, the Washington Post, and this time I believe them. When it comes to the Nord Stream pipeline, there were highly specific details, which included mem numbers of operatives and methods of attack, show that for nearly a year, Western allies had a basis to suspect Kyiv in the sabotage. But Joe Biden, well, he's, he's in love with Kyiv, and he hinted heavily that it was Russia who was to blame. But you also asked me uh, earlier about the pipeline. And let me say this, it was a, a deliberate act of sabotage, and now the Russians are pumping out disinformation and lies. We work with our allies to get to the bottom exactly what, it, precisely what happened. That's a little bit of disinformation and lies right there. He knew three months ahead of time that Ukraine, Ukraine had detailed plans to do this. But Joe and Ukraine, together forever, almost romantic, three days before Joe Biden left the vice presidency, he made it over to Ukraine for some reason to uh, talk to the president of that country in a very peculiar way. Mr. President, I may have to call you once every couple of weeks just to hear your voice. Uh, it's been going on a long time. What is that all about? I guess he's making nice on Hunter's boss. Wow. So many lies, so many incredible lies. The biggest lie of them all, WMD in Iraq. Yet it's Trump somehow who is in trouble again and again and again. He didn't start any new wars. He sought to end them, and he's in trouble. What is the latest? Well, it almost doesn't matter because it's a familiar pattern. This is what the ruling class does. The Democrat Party, corporate America, academia, media, they've pulled this stunt, what, a dozen times, 20 times? The Steele dossier, Russia, 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 Ukraine stuff, January 6th, Stormy Daniels, building valuations in New York City. Democrats and prosecutors go from one outrageous abuse of power to the next. And conservatives, we complain about it, and we go down various rabbit holes with them, and it doesn't change anything. They just keep on with the next outrageous offense. So far for us, this is a losing game. And so much of the conservative media, they don't really like Trump. They hold their nose when defending him, so they're only really doing it with one hand. And there's one guy in charge of so much of conservative media, Murdoch and his sons, Rupert Murdoch. And that guy is known to personally despise Trump. So they're not really defending him all that much. So. Here we go again. I will do it because it's the right thing to do. Yes, we're playing along with it sometimes, and I can, it drives me crazy, but we have to do this. It's happening with this strange individual in the purple smock. He's going to decide whether or not to see criminal charges against Trump over this document trap. And it was a trap. We could find out any moment whether or not Donald Trump is going to be indicted over this, but I know that this part right here is not true. Throughout his career, Jack Smith has built a reputation as an impartial and determined prosecutor who leads teams with energy and focus to follow the facts wherever they lead. As special counsel, he will exercise independent prosecutorial judgment to decide whether charges should be brought. All right, actually, uh, nothing personal, Jack Smith, but none of that actually appears to be true. And in Washington, D.C., you guys have all kinds of conflict of interest, guidelines, rules, regulations. Apparently, they were all blown off for this guy. So this is the guy who goes after Trump. Look at this, his wife. Uh, sorry to bring her up, pal, but, you know, you didn't have to take this job. She's made big contributions to uh, Democrats and to Barack Obama and Joe Biden. And she produced a film, co-produced a film about Michelle Obama. So when the boss, the attorney general comes in, would you like to take this assignment uh, looking into Donald Trump? You say, no, I can't. I'm sorry. There's a conflict of interest. But somehow that doesn't happen here. 
The weaponization of the justice system, justice system weaponization, this is in full swing. And it seems like there's basically nothing we can do about it because they're running the government and the media, and they've been doing this for a long time, and they're pretty good at it. Who remembers Tom DeLay, this crazy case? He was prosecuted and indicted. They actually sent him to jail. I mean, they, they put him in handcuffs, and he had to go take a mugshot. Totally innocent. He was just conducting politics. Same goes for Rick Perry. They indicted him because he vetoed something that they really liked, the Democrats, and they arrested him. This is his mugshot, by the way. Not a bad mugshot, huh? Uh, on and on and on. They, they go after Republicans they don't like, and they'll find any reason whatsoever. Poor the late Ted Stevens of Alaska. This was a pathetic attempt to somehow turn Alaska uh, blue. Kay Bailey Hutchinson, most of her Senate career, she was under indictment. Bob McDonald, the ex-governor of Virginia, again, pr persecuted and prosecuted for conducting politics. Totally innocent. And I do believe that these gentlemen are innocent. Veterans of the Trump administration, <laughs> Steve Bannon. I mean, what he's going through and what Peter Navarro went through and continues to go through, Paul Manafort, you know, sometimes they put all these names together and, and there's Michael Flynn. And what do they get in trouble for? Taking a phone call as the incoming national security advisor. They set up traps. In some cases, they actually got their prey. They have an interesting environment in which to work, federal prosecutors. The courthouse in downtown Washington, D.C. Why do they like working out of Washington, D.C. so much? Look at the jury pool. 90 plus percent Democrat, 92.1 percent. Uh, the constitutional right for an impartial jury is impossible in Washington, D.C. for Republicans. So. Donald Trump. I call this the eye of the tiger picture. He's actually in custody. This is right after he was technically arrested over that, whatever that stuff was. Who can remember? Alvin Bragg. So the FBI raided his home. Remember that? So this is, this actually could lead to charges filed against Donald Trump, federal charges filed against Donald Trump this week. Remember when they put the documents on the ground? Never telling us, oh, by the way, that some of these folders are empty. But I have a whole new take on the case. I always knew it was bogus, but now I do believe it was a trap. This is Timothy Parlator, formerly on Trump's defense team, said something about this case that I did not know comparing how National Archives treated Trump to other previous presidents. The negotiation is over the next two years after any president leaves office, they're supposed to go through all of the records mm -hmm. and they're supposed to separate out what is personal, what is presidential. Right. Personal they get to keep, all presidential records end up at the National Archives headquarters in D.C. This ordinarily happens where NARA gets a facility in the town where the president has moved to, uh, so in Chicago for Obama, down in Texas for the, uh, the Bushes, mm -hmm. and all of them are held in that facility. Here, what NARA did instead is they chose not to get a facility like that. They had GSA move everything to his house, mm -hmm. and then were asking him to immediately send everything from his house back up to D.C., where he wouldn't be able to go through them yeah. as convenient. Wow. Uh, that's fascinating. And we looked it up. It's true. When Barack Obama left office, the National Archives had already rented this facility in Chicago just for those papers so they can bring it there and they would be close to Barack Obama. The records of the Obama administration will be housed in a converted furniture warehouse and showroom in Hoffman Estates, about 30 miles northwest of Chicago. When Bush left office back in 2009, they had something all set up for him in Texas, a major warehouse. Yeah, let's see here. It was in Louisville, Texas, approximately 20 miles from the permanent library site. Bill Clinton as well. They had it all set up ahead of time. They had a nice little facility to put the papers temporarily before they were moved to the library or back to the archives. But when it came to Trump, they didn't get a special warehouse. They just said, take them back to your house. Interesting. I believe it was a trap all along. And the National Archives are uh, deep state, very woke, and not to be trusted. I was negotiating with NARA. Do you know what NARA is? The National Archives. Extremely, but you extremely don't left group of them. people. Extremely left. And I was negotiating with They're them. All of a sudden, they raided my house. 
You hear the knee-jerk reaction of the media, they're not left, they're bipartisan. Yes, they are left. Here's proof. Here's the director of uh, the National Archives being very woke. Uh, there's never been a female archivist, has there? No, I would, and that, that's advice I've given to the White House already, that you better not hire another white feet, male, <laughs> um, that we've had 10 white males. Wow. That is textbook virtue signaling. Hey, look at me, I'm white, but I'm saying you don't have to, you shouldn't hire any more white people. Uh, I'm the last one. Wow, these people are woke and these people trapped Trump. Yes, they did. They tried to, at least, when the boxes were leaving the White House, okay? Uh, they couldn't just watch TV. They had to pick up the phone and try to make a federal case out of it. This is January 20th of 2021, and I think that guy you just heard talking for the National Archives sees this and says, I can remember watching the Trumps leaving the White House and saying to myself, what the hell's in that box? <laughs> Next, please. That began a whole process of trying to determine whether any records had not been turned over to the archives. You snakes. You knew how to handle this ahead of time. You knew how to follow the Obama playbook, the Bush playbook, the Clinton playbook. But I think you were out to undermine. Get these guys. You came close. Meanwhile, shot by your own gun, Joe Biden, a swamp favorite. All those secret documents right behind that silly Corvette. You remember in the aftermath of the Mar-a-Lago raid and the picture that the FBI put out trying to get everybody upset. Oh, my God. Well, <laughs> this is possibly the most hypocritical moment in all of hypocrisy's history. When you saw the photograph of the top secret documents laid out on the floor at Mar-a-Lago, what did you think to yourself looking at that image? How that could possibly happen how one, anyone could be that irresponsible. And I thought, what data was in there that may compromise sources and methods? By that, I mean names of people who helped, or et cetera. And it's just uh, totally irresponsible. Sure you did, Joe. You had absolutely no authorization to have secret stuff all over your house. As a senator, some of the stuff going all the way back to your Senate days, a man who lies like that, so confidently is very, very vain. I've noticed that about Joe. He's a, he's a vain guy. A long time ago, it was noticed that he dresses rich, okay? Even though he boasted of being the poorest man in the Senate. <laughs> what would our founding fathers have made of this character, huh? Our great founding fathers. We were so lucky that they were where they were, when they were. Sam Adams, one of them, beautiful quote, a friend of mine showed me today. Sam Adams, I think uh, he'd be appalled. If ever a time should come when vain and aspiring men shall possess the highest seats in government, our country will stand in need of its experienced patriots to prevent its ruin. Experienced patriots. That's all of us. That's all of us. And we are all needed to save this country. I'll be right back.